there's a lot in these in these series, isn't it? That that there's a lot of complexity in in market data. Now, yeah. one thing I also said is, oh, let's just do this for the S and P five hundred because because that's kind of interesting. So you know, we have our SPY here. So that's the data frame with our series. So let's just take the close values and then take the percentage change. So we can do spy close percentage change. And then what we can do is we could do this with core. Yeah. So that correlates. And then what we can do is we can shift this and if we shift it by one you remember that shift it actually looks at the previous series mm -hmm. so 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 with minus one you know we, we we shift it sort of we get the future value over the current value and, and so this is basically shifting it backwards depending depends what you know how you want to do it and so if we run this we can see there is a negative autocorrelation. So it's minus 0 0.1 here. Yeah? And so one thing we could do is, of course, loop through, say, yeah, 100. Then we say I here. Yeah. And so this now basically shifts the returns by a certain amount and we can then do something like OF equals this and then let's just let's just print them out so you see that that's quite interesting we've got a whole lot of all the correlations here mm -hmm. and they're obviously a lot lower than what we see in our artificial series because you know market data are just unfortunately not as strongly auto correlated but still something there let's just see if we can plot this so we go coefs equals this and then we go coefs dot append coef run this and then we can go, um, we can basically use the same thing as here. And we've got the same range as well. All right, look at this. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what are we seeing here? What do you think? Yeah, I would say like the because we use the close prices from s p so probably we see like the correlation because it also correlates to the the one before like then it's yeah. kind of like the highs and lows of like the close prices compared to like the previous ones yeah so so in some ways what we see is obviously that we get a really close correlation you know to the previous return and then and then you know when we correlate the return now uh, with the uh, return further back you know the correlations are much much uh, smaller you know yeah. and so so but in some ways you know does it does it actually because because what we're doing now is we're always taking the correlations of one day right now like the returns from yesterday right and then we shift them and then we correlate the one day returns from a previous period but that's not really a great way of of doing things right because you know the the one day return here and and the one day return 100 day spec doesn't make an awful lot of sense correct so Another thing we could technically do is we could correlate longer periods, 
with each other. So we correlate the one day period with the previous one day period. But then if we have a two day period, we correlate it to the previous two day period mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that, that could be a bit more, um, a bit more complex, right? Because, you know, we, we, we somehow need to, need to take this into account and with the indexing. But what's great is there is a function called resample. And what we can do is we can basically take a series and we resample it. And then we get the values in that resample period. So have a look. So for example, if we do spy dot PCT change, yeah, we can do a resample. And so let's say we want to resample it to seven days. Yeah. So one week. So we change this to one week, but then we have to specify a function, what we should do with this, because we basically compress the data. And so if we wanted PCT change, we want to basically get the sum of our percentage changes. So a non, non reinvested thing. And so if we run this, you can now see here fourth, 11th, 18th, 25th. So you actually sum up all the returns here. So that's a, a resampling. Now, when you do this, you have to be very careful. In our case, we don't really have to worry too much about it. But when you do a resampling, the actual resampling function is quite complex because it is, there's various functionalities where you put your date at the beginning of the resampling period, at the end, and so on. So when you do this resampling, don't just apply it blindly. Sometimes you need to be extremely careful when you get that value of the resampling period, right? It, it and, and, and if you, if you actually look at the resampling function, if we do just a question mark and then something like spy dot resample, there's actually a lot to this function. You can see this here. So there is quite a bit of stuff that that you need to learn about this resampling function. So when you use it, just be really careful and familiarize yourself with it before you just use it outright.